there until we all, until you got here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're very self conscious. There's <laughs> behavior. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Wesley Fruget. I am the Development and Communications Director here at Intamon Theater. We're so happy to have you joining us today. Um, I want to welcome you all to this event and thank you for being here. Um, before we begin, I will share a land acknowledgement. Uh, Intamon Theater acknowledges that we gather in community on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples. We honor with gratitude the land itself, that its First Nations and those who have gathered here since time immemorial. Uh, we do welcome you to introduce yourself in the chat if you would like. And to those of you who are joining us, watching it not live, thank you for taking some time to watch it on demand. Um, <laughs> so uh, welcome to our Meet the Team of Two Mile Hollow event. This is our first of four live Share the Love events. And we're really thrilled to be kicking off the campaign today. Um, I'm sitting here with the team of Two Mile Hollow. It's really exciting. And I will let them all introduce themselves in just a minute after I stop talking. Um, <laughs> so just a few housekeeping details. Um, today's event is being live recorded for rebroadcast. So be aware of that. Um, please keep your mic on mute during the event. Thank you. And we recommend viewing in speaker view, not gallery. And you can change your view by clicking in the like, I believe it's like the upper right hand corner. You will find a little like, a uh, little button that you can change your view right there. That's the uh, the correct term, the little button. Um, <laughs> live captions are available and you can turn those on if those would be helpful for you uh, by clicking the CC closed caption button in the bottom of your screen. Lastly, uh, let's do keep it polite, please. Uh, no uh, rude comments or racist speech will be allowed today. Thank you. Okay, campaign. So what is Share the Love? It starts today and it runs through April 13th. It's an 18 day campaign to raise $100,000 to support not only this incredible production, but also uh, accessibility. We're talking about free tickets for the community and we're talking about COVID safety, keeping you, our audience safe and our actors and the incredible team that's working behind the scenes. Um, and also supporting our free education programs like the Starfish Project, which is currently in Franklin High School working on the Adams Family Musical. Yay! I can't wait to see it. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you so much for uh, making a contribution and sharing the love. Um, we're really, really excited to be the professional theater in residence here at Seattle Central College. And that is actually where we are Zooming from you live from our incredible rehearsal space here at SEC. So we're uh, super honored to be here. Um, as I'm sure you can all imagine, reopening and resuming production in the midst of a global pandemic has not been easy. So we're really reliant, just like all nonprofits and theaters, you know, we're really reliant on donors like you to step up during this time it means so much to us. $10, $50, $10,000, every little bit helps, so thank you. Let's actually uh, see uh, Wiley over here behind the scenes, if we can pull up on the screen and see how the campaign is doing so far. Drum roll. Woo! Wow, That's look at this. Team, thank you, London. Okay, <laughs> so I see we're already over 10% of our goal in just the first nice. day, so thank you so much. And I want to thank London and Beth and Margie and our best friend, Anonymous. <laughs> thank you. Uh, whether at this time or at any time, you can go uh, on your phone, you can text Intamon to 44321 to make your tax deductible donation, or you can go to intamon.org slash share the love, learn all about the campaign. Okay. Um, oh, sponsors. I do want to thank our sponsors before we get going. Uh, these are incredible organizations who have really stepped up, not only to help this campaign, but also to help with our entire season here at Intamon Theater. So I'm going to rattle them off and then we're going to give them a round of, a, round of applause. Uh, they are Arts Fund, For Culture, Arts Wa, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Seattle Office of Arts and Culture, Ad 3, The Stranger, Seattle Central College, Franklin Pierce Northwest and Jack Daniels. Thank you. Wow. Okay, and now I am really pleased to introduce you to our host, 
and the director of Two Mile Hollow, Jesse Zhao, sitting right across from me. So uh, Jesse's originally from Houston, Texas, which is also my hometown. Oh, it's mine too. Oh my oh, God. Wow. It's Jack. <laughs> Which I always say is uh, Beyonceville. Yeah, she went to my high school. I mean, much later than that. But yeah, I'm yeah. the same high school. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so Jesse primarily works in new and contemporary plays, and we're so honored to have you here in Seattle with us. Um, he's developed new work at the Lark Play Development Center, New York International Fringe Festival. What what? Um, <laughs> The, uh, what is this? Uh, the <laughs> Kitchen Theater Company. And he was the artistic director of the 2010 Yale Summer Cabaret. And he served as the staff repertory director of the acting company. And he received his MFA in directing from Yale School of Drama. So, you know, just a little, a little <laughs> school up there, over there. So I'm always serious about that. So um, I'm gonna welcome Jesse and allow you to take it from here. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> First off, I always say thank you so much to the Devon Theater for having uh, for having me here and also to be working to be to be producing this show to Mile Hollow by Leah Nanico Winkler, which is a play that I've known about for many years and have adored and I'm so excited by this opportunity and the warm welcome I've received from everyone here in Seattle. So thank you. Uh, I also want to take a moment just to point out that you know one of the reasons why all of us are able to sit at this table right now without masks during this COVID time is because of a very rigorous COVID safety plan that Indemon has put into place here. And so we just were tested yesterday, for example, and so our ability to be here today uh, with you is, um, is because of the work that Indemon has been doing. So it's, so it's important. Um, so I encourage you all to support it. Uh, today, we're just going to have a little conversation about the show that we're working on right now, Two Mile Hollow. Um, we just, this was our second day of rehearsal and it's really been lovely being in the room with this group of extraordinary artists who have such really, I mean, yeah, y'all, we were just doing some table work before we started this and it was, it was fire. It was really lovely. <laughs> uh, this, this is a great group. Um, so I'm super excited to be talking with you further. And because it's also the second day of rehearsals for us, it's also my chance to get to know these wonderful people. <laughs> <over there. laughs> but before we do that, uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about what Two Mile Hollow is. Um, it's the story of uh, the Donnelly family, who, who are a very successful white um, acting family who uh, have come gathered together at the family manse in Two Mile Hollow uh, in the Hamptons. And uh, they've come to, because the house has been sold and it's time to divvy up the belongings because the patriarch of the family, Derek Donnelly, a celebrated actor, has long been uh, deceased and now it's time for the family to move on. Uh, one of the children of the family, Christopher, who is a successful actor in his own right, has brought his assistant Charlotte, uh, a, a young Asian American woman, to, uh, to the fam this family event and uh, all sorts of hijinks ensue as a result. I think it's a hilarious play. It's a really great time and really lucky to be working with uh, this group of actors um, who are four of our five uh, members of this acting company. So uh, just as an opportunity for, uh, for us to get to know these wonderful people, I'd just like to uh, invite them to introduce themselves and uh, please just uh, introduce yourselves uh, the role you're playing in the show, and, uh, you know, just for kicks, something about yourself that people may not know that you wouldn't mind sharing <laughs> with the internet. Oh, we're starting, okay. We're starting yeah. the thing. <laughs> uh, hi, I am Keala. I play Joshua. Um, Keala is a Hawaiian name, and one thing a lot of people don't probably know is that my family lineage actually goes all the way back to Hawaiian royalty. Nice. nice. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Um, Hi, my name is Annie Yim, she, her, and I am playing Mary. Um, I have been told that my lineage also mm -hmm. from Korea is royalty, but I think most Asians do say that <laughs> to their children. So anyway, but the thing, that, um, the, little thing that, <laughs> the little thing that I'd love to share is I love um, horror movies and I really want to be in one. I love being scared and I have an amazing scream. I'm sure y'all will hear it <laughs> yeah, at some point. Yeah, at some point. <laughs> Whenever I get like surprised or whatever, I scream. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I'm, I love screaming. And now I'm plotting. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, yes. Hi, 
I'm Naho Chioya, she, her pronouns. I have dark long hair and sort of rusty color shirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> I play play and things people don't know about me or things that I can share. I don't know, I guess my parents, my I'm from Japan, I speak Japanese. I came here to go to University of Washington from Japan. So. English is my second language, yeah, but a lot of people probably already knew that. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, my name is Ray Tagavilla. Uh, I'll be playing the role of Christopher. This sounds like an audition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you could be fired, be careful. <laughs> Doing a piece. Uh, uh, one thing, uh, there's some people who who know this, but I guess I've never said this over the internet. Um, I got into acting because of a favor. Mm. Uh, I got into acting because of a favor. Oh, a favor. Um, uh, someone did a favor for me back in high school, and I don't remember what it was. And then he said, now you owe me. And I said, OK. And the rest is history. <laughs> Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. What was the project? What, what, you can't yeah, stop there. That's weird. Like, so what did he ask you that got you into acting? You're saying he it. asked me to audition for Shakespeare, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, and I got the role of Demetrius. But why did he ask you? Was he a director? Was he? No, he was a, a. Okay, so I was in band. I played clarinet, and this friend of mine, his name is Peter. He played trumpet, and so we saw each other seventh period every single day mm -hmm. and uh so i auditioned for this show and it was a different I language think, <laughs> i don't think he's going to give us the deets we want right now well, 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 we don't have a lot of time we're going to dig it out of you well, so that's us, as my I, daughter I, would say i can't remember is yeah, demetrius the success. jerky one in midsummer or yeah he was typecast <laughs> 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 and, I've never, and it's basically I've never lived it down. <laughs> never You'll back. see. Never <laughs> Come to the show. It. I love it. Show. Amazing. Come Amazing. To the show. You'll see. <laughs> so I thought I'd start this conversation, but just, you know, uh, I shared a little bit about the basic plot of the play or whatever. But I'd love to hear from uh, from y'all about like, what do you think the play is about for you? One thing that, of course, we haven't talked about um, and Naho, thank you so much for thinking about uh, accessibility in this description. I should take a moment just to, to, to identify myself as a tall Asian man with shaped, a shaved head wearing a blue shirt. So, um, <laughs> why I mean, is that funny? <laughs> because it's, it's specific. It's very specific. But you know, for people, for some folks at home who may not be able to 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 appreciate that, I, you know, I I want to take that. I want to I take a moment to acknowledge that. Uh, one thing that I mentioned in my description about this being a white family, and obviously these are not white actors, that's something that <laughs> Sabine <Good> already called. <laughs> so so much you know. Part, part, of our, part of our table work for today was, was talking about this, which is great. Um, uh, I, think that, I, think that there, I think that there is like a real, you know, powerful dynamic here in terms of using the performing of whiteness as a way of dismantling white supremacy or making fun of my white supremacy, which I think is something that's very much part of this play. Anyway, that's not that's my thing. What I like to know is what do y'all think this play is about? What in just these two days that we've been talking about and working about and the time we've spent already thinking about it. Well, I, I already went first. I know. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I'll go go quick. Yes, uh, please. Uh, some of the things that popped into my head was it's generational trauma. Mm. Um, and and uh, sometimes the people who love you the most are the ones that hurt you the most. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. very true. Mm -hmm. Very true. I think uh, it's about people trying to fill their cups, trying to fill their wells, their mm -hmm. you know the humanity that they need. They're they're seeking, seeking answers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And before you know, as before we go further with this, you know, all of y'all are sort of at home thinking, wow, that sounds super serious. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's you know, super yes, funny. It's super funny. And I think, but, but what's important for us as we've been working on this play is really thinking about how to um, find the humor in ways that are not sitcomish, right? Mm -hmm. Really grounded in the truth of these characters, even though they're behaving in like ridiculous and amazing ways. So that's been a really exciting part of our conversation in rehearsal so far. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think too, 
Yes, this is funny, but also I want to point out that the playwright has specifically said these people are sincere in all of the things. Yeah. And what you said, Jesse, about this is a white family. And as a person of color, looking at some of the seriousness of the yeah. you know, topics that we as family, white family, talk about, I don't know. I mean, it seems ridiculous, but it's not to mm -hmm. this particular yeah you know, the white people. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, and then I look at it as a, in real life, as a person, a woman of color, how are those things important? And I, it, but it is. Yeah. And, you know, so that's also looking at things and like pre being presented to some of, uh, some of these problems and issues that's happening. And it takes you a moment and like, wait, oh, what's happening is it funny or is it really funny yeah. you know so that's yeah. something that i'm hoping that the people who come see the show will be like oh this is so funny wait is it funny you know like <laughs> is it about you know especially depending on who you are yeah. out there yeah i mean i think that's one of the things that i hope audience audiences leave with is there are questions that they never knew they should ask but they ask themselves mm -hmm. as they leave. Mm -hmm. I mean, also, I hope they laugh a ton. I hope they have joy and all things. But yeah, like questions. Like the laughter leads to the questions. Like, yeah. Why am I laughing? Why is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, I think that's true. I think it was really important for uh, Leah, uh, the playwright, but when she was writing this to create a sort of situation that was creating opportunities for uh, performers of color to really like do some of the things that have been sort of in a lot of our dramatic literature and a lot of our sort of canonical literature has been almost sort of exclusively stories that white people have been allowed to tell, you know, in terms of talking about ridiculous family drama mm -hmm. and, you know, um, just being messy, right? right. I think uh, well, she kind of brings it back to generational trauma yeah. because we're talking about this white family and the generational trauma they have. But in our conversation today, we're talking about immigrant families, the mm -hmm. generational trauma that they experience. Mm -hmm. And so these concepts are not exactly foreign to anyone or, you know, specific to any one community. Right. right. Everyone experiences these kinds of things. Everyone right. experiences happiness and sadness and loss right. and blah, 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 and success and whatever, but in love. But so these themes are really common throughout all the theater. But you're right, right? We've only been able to tell it through white characters. Yeah, from, and from a represent, right. representation perspective mm -hmm. in terms of being say, who's been allowed to tell that story, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so I love that this particular group of artists is telling that story now. And I love the complicated mess and conversations <laughs> that we've been having oh, about man. it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great, great. Um, <laughs> That, all that being said, what is the like most interesting or challenging thing you're anticipating about working on this show? Mm. Oh man, dude, Joshua's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you how do you balance him and ground him in something that is real and authentic and motivated? Because it's and you, you know we use that word a lot, motivated, but otherwise it'll feel like a character. Otherwise it'll feel like you're playing a type or, yep. a, or you know just one angle and it's he's has to be something that's more complex than that just for just for the folks at home yep. who may not know the show as well as we do like tell us a little bit about joshua who is so who is joshua the is the oldest brother of two um and he has not nearly had any success as, as uh, his younger brother has uh he has many many degrees i won't tell you how many you have to come to the show and find out <laughs> um but he's yeah and so he's so obviously he's 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 bright bright and i mean maybe his family has money to get him into school but he's he's managed to get through get this far in his life he's middle-aged and he's looking for kind of purpose really um but he's very manic manic depressive so he's got these mood swings and we don't know necessarily where they come from with triggerism that's what we're finding out but so it's going to be fun trying to figure out how to how to make it feel real and authentic and not just kind of this this you know two-dimensional caricature of, of what we think of this diagnosis, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think yeah. that's I think that's really key in terms of the work we've been doing on the show so far is how do we, you know, with the temptation is to make the caricature mm -hmm. of the character, mm -hmm. right? And make and go to the extreme, right? But again, for Leah, it's really important that we're all sort of grounded and finding like real human reasons for why these characters, it, much in like much as in real life, right? When we think about our sort of messy 
right. people in our own mm -hmm. lives, right? Like they're often like not that self-aware of their own mess, right? So and, how, and how do we honor that and tell that truthfully, but also in a way that is funny and engaging. It's like be unapologetic, but also compassionate. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's funny. Sure. You're saying like the messy people in our lives. I'm like, aren't we all those messy people? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> well, no, we were talking about this in rehearsal today, which is just, you know, I mean, we see other people's lives with 100% yeah. clarity, right? We have all the ideas about other people's lives. But if you ask us about ourselves, we're like, we don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Blinders, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The I, yeah. I'm. <laughs> yes to all of that, and I think in this messiness, and for Glyce, the the widow of this, you know, the mother to all these children, um, it was challenging. It, it's going to be challenging for me to look at this, and as we were talking about this white, rich white family. And I am also a racial equity consultant, and my job usually go in and do workshops and training about racial equity and being aware of bias and, you know, teaching people not to be Karens. And to, <laughs> that's where it's going to be hard for me because I've worked so hard not to be uh, those people mm -hmm. and teaching people not to be these people and to say, actually, you get to be this person and have all the privilege and not even know that you have it. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be- And how not to judge her, right? right. Like don't because judge Because it's life. important to me yeah. as life, some of these ridiculous things, but that is a norm for this woman. Yeah. And yeah. to take that and embrace it and to be okay, mm -hmm. to say, no, I don't like this script. <laughs> no, I don't like this costume. Right. I need different shoes. Yeah. And to be okay with that, it's going to be a lot of fun and challenge for me. Mm -hmm. And to be authentic and mm -hmm. to you know be right. real about that. What seems different for me inside of this uh character and all these characters is a way in which these characters kind of take up space mm. which I, I which I feel as an Asian American sometimes like you know I've been sort of raised not to take up space yeah. right especially as a large man I you know I and maybe that's something I do to myself in terms of like mm -hmm. I try to minimize the amount of space I take but to have a character who unapologetically is like I wrote a letter yeah. <laughs> right exactly yeah. you know. but I'm sincere about it I'm like this is how I do things exactly. and they're you know unapologetically privileged yeah. and not even know that yeah. you know yeah I mean, one of the things we were talking about before was I said, I feel like the thing about this family, though, is just like everyone in this world, I think they're just trying to do the best that they can. Right. Everyone is trying, we are all trying to do the best we can. Unfortunately, sometimes the best we can butts up against um, kindness, <laughs> like just, you know, humanity and all that, but, but I do think they are trying the best they can. And I think one of the harder things, uh, as an Asian American is also because we're taught in that same vein to be so polite. There's a certain, like be, you know, you have to be nice. Like there's this kind of, and, and I think that this family doesn't, that's not part of their vocabulary. That's not part of what they understand. Um, they were taught to do. Nobody mm -hmm. said be nice because yeah. they were given everything. So they didn't have to be. They nice. did not. Nobody yeah. wanted them to be nice. They weren't expected <laughs> yeah. to be yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah, all of that. Yeah. So. <laughs> what uh, what other I mean what other things again what would be exciting, interesting, challenging that you anticipate? Pace, 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 pace. Yeah. yeah. This this script uh, there is that initial read of this has to be like. And then what makes it a really great play is the moments where you can kind of go, <sighs> yeah, yeah. and then you can breathe and then have a real sincere moment yeah. mm -hmm. uh, with another, or, or have a moment for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if that's the choice you want to make, whatever it may be. Um, uh, but that, you know, that's something that everyone, uh, that's something that's going to always be challenging for me, no matter what play it is, yeah. but this, but a, a comedy, a comedy is yeah. where it's incredibly challenging because you don't want to tire an audience out yeah. Yeah. either. You want to give them a little bit of space to breathe and then come in and then back away and then come in and back away. Mm -hmm. It's like the waves. So it's, um, but that's always, that's why I love doing comedies mm -hmm. 
I love doing all types of plays, but comedies is where I feel like I can really just sit and put my seatbelt on and just be like, I'm gonna enjoy this ride, mm. uh, but be safe about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See how I got the seatbelt on. Yeah, that was the last minute. Um, <laughs> But like, <laughs> you, have the, you have the lights behind you there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. That being said, that do you think that do you think that um, do you think that you won't really kind of feel that then until there's an audience in the room, or mm, do you? Um, no, I, there's a lot. I have stage fright, so I'm scared all the time. <laughs> anytime right now, I'm on, uh, yeah, anytime <laughs> I'm on stage, it's just like it's. So, but that's what that's what's exciting about it. Yeah. That's what's really, that's what kind of me keeps me moving forward is that this can fail and it's failed before. And so now I'm not as scared about it uh, now because there have been moments where, you know, I think your worst nightmare is, oh, what if I go up or what well, something happens and I can't say my lines? That's happened to me mm -hmm. and nobody died. Uh, I so <laughs> that I know of. Uh, what if effect, man? She's, what you she's my about? rock. You were just talking about parallel universes, man. In one of those universes, she's somebody died. Um, but that's, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I know it's going to come together, yeah. but it, for me, it doesn't get really fun mm -hmm. until you, until you get that reaction and that, not even reaction, but when you feel that energy from a, from an audience just sitting there, mm -hmm. it feels different. Yeah. yeah, and so that's usually when some new ideas start to pop up too, right? It, it, it's such a, I mean, it's such a, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm in education, so maybe it's just a cliche to me or whatever. But like, it's such a cliche in the sense of like the audience being the final cast member, right? And <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And you know, that dynamic being such a rich source of opportunity for actors. And yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. I mean, I think that that I do. I do have a question, though. I mean, does anyone not get stage fright? Like, I I feel like that's kind of when you say I have stage fright. Who I I, I live for that feeling. Really? Yeah, because that's how I know it matters. Oh, interesting. Like, if I if I get if I get backstage and I'm not even a little bit like, is this gonna be okay? If if I get out, if I'm back down, I'm just like, got this. Then I'm like. No, then man, you get stage fright. Right, because right. then like, you're like, wrong. then you're like, something's <laughs> got to be wrong. Because I'm way, you know. So right. like, I, I live for that feeling. I, I, I love it. It's like people talk about the moment before you, like the moment before you act and before you go on stage. Yeah. I like the moment before that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So where you're, where you're, like, where you haven't problem. quite got, you're not quite ready to do it yet, you're in the and you're like, oh my god, what are we about to do? <laughs> I'm gonna do it. We've been throwing. Up. We've been doing it. Let's go do it. <laughs> right. And so I don't know. For me. I get it. I mean, it is. You're terrified, but like, if you're not terrified, at least a little bit. Why are you here? Well, that's I mean, how I feel. When I, when I say stage fright, I mean like floaty. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. dizzy, nausea. Yeah. Like yeah, things where bathroom. you can't really even you're like not say you're your yeah. lines, or yeah. or it, it, I think this happens with every actor where they're like, before you even say your lines, uh -huh. you don't know if they're even going to come out. Yep. Right. Properly. Right. Until you just say it, and then and then it's off to the races. Right. Oh, I'm so fascinated by that. What has kept you in the industry then? Life. Life Masochist. is weird. Yeah. Life is weird. Masochist. It gave me. It, get, it decided to just put me in a situation where I'm uncomfortable, uh -huh. and asked me to be like, this. This is who you are. This right. is what's yep. going to happen to right. you now. So uh, yeah, I honestly don't know, and I blame Peter. Uh, <laughs> Trumpet player. Coming for you, Peter. See what I did there? I brought it back. <laughs> that's a that's like, called technique. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah. And I was a senior in high school. I was about to graduate when I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. That's Peter funny. Peter laid that on me. Peter, you have a lot to answer. To. That's funny. Yeah. I, I entered you dub with uh, thinking I'm, I might go like biomed. Because I was actually thinking about studying like genetics, forensics. That's what I was really into. Yeah, yeah. I took a drama 101 class and I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, acting was, was, the first thing, was the first thing I ever wanted to do when I was a kid. Yeah. I was like, I just love the idea that you get to be different people and, and explore different yeah. ideas all yeah. the time. And like, that's your life. But I was very shy. I was very nerdy. I was like the only brown kid in a white neighborhood. I had glasses. I was frail. I was tiny. Uh, so I was like, <laughs> no way anybody's going to want to watch me do anything. Mm. And then I, like, I, you know, I just happened to be at UW. I took a 101 class mm. as an elective. Mm. Turned my entire life around. Yeah. But that's why I didn't have a plan. I got out of school. And I was like, oh, I did. Mm. So for like many years, I just was like, I guess that was I'll just work. I don't, spark, man. 
yeah and so then when i when i finally kind of had an opportunity i was like i'm doing this yeah but to what extent are plans overrated right yeah yeah, I'm still yeah but i mean i didn't have any I'm still so to figure out I know, right? at least I you know. had the foresight to get in there and like when you got out you kept kind of moving that way so that was no it was really more yeah. like i guess yeah this is not right like yeah. it didn't it nothing i didn't feel that push of like this is the right thing to do yeah. I just I was trapped because yeah. I didn't I was about to graduate mm. and my my mom is we had this conversation my mom is all about where the money is coming from and my <laughs> dad is kind of like the hippie <laughs> and so and so uh my plan was to be like a business man you know, sure because that's easy money that's where that's that I was thinking as my mother um and then peter came in and dislodged all of that so your mom might have hurt peter <laughs> <laughs> no no she was Peter's just dumbstruck yeah. by the whole thing um not violent but she was she was like why why yeah. are you doing this yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then my dad would be standing slightly behind her going don't worry about it just do what you want to do <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do it, ma'am. All right. He's that guy. That's <laughs> uh, and, and that's who I get my humor from, really, yeah. is my father. I love it. Uh, so anyways, so, yeah, that's 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 yeah. Good. Good. Uh, well, I, I I know we're holding time for audience questions as well, but I'd love to ask one more question before we, we move on to that, which is um, you know, like what does the theater mean to you? Oh boy. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> I was the last to talk, so. Okay. <laughs> it's a place for me to have permission to be and do things. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to fall in love, you get to cry, mm -hmm. you get to, you know, because we in this world and society there are certain ways that people expect you to be mm -hmm. and there's so much you hold on to and this is where you get to let go mm -hmm. and every time you know when i taught drama 101 as a teacher right maybe you changed my life i don't know, <laughs> but, you know, I know dude. Man, man. I can't but on you. one of the things i always say in like the scenes like breathe yes let go yes and the moment this thing that you let go, people just start crying because yeah. there's so much yep. that we, every single one of us, hold on to mm -hmm. as yeah. we exist in this world. Yes, yeah. there's, there's a little bit of Adam's play. Right. right? Yeah. And then, so to me, theater is this is where I get to, yeah, yeah. you know, this is a safe place for me. This mm -hmm. is peaceful mm -hmm. and comfortable mm -hmm. there was a workshop i was at and said what are some places that you are comfortable and safe and peaceful in the moment i like on stage mm -hmm. in the rehearsal room mm -hmm. that's where i will feel <laughs> safe but, <laughs> but you know this is where i am and this is where i let go yeah. and i have permission to yeah. let go mm -hmm. i agree you know? i mean so, i yeah i think one of the things that uh, we haven't mentioned is for me, this will be my first play back uh, in mm -hmm. front of an audience oh, wow. since uh, quarantine world. And I, I had so many questions about, can I get up on stage again? What will it be like to have that audience in front again? And what, what does that feel like, right? Like the energy and all of that, it's going to be, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm anticipating. I'm uh, wondrous. I question. I, I'm, you know, so I'm hoping that we'll get a lot of wonderful audiences to come and have all those emotions together. You're gonna be fine. Experience. My first playback. <laughs> my first playback. Okay. My first playback was, but the first time I ever did a two-hander, and it was a full length play. Mm. Well, okay, I will say. And I'm just like I was terrified. I, mean, I made I it, so understand. you're gonna be fine. We got all of us here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got all of the support. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, well, except for me. Oh, yeah, yes, for me. he won't help me at all. Well, actually, right. he might be like, he's gonna, he's gonna actually try it. <laughs> new, new phone, who this? <laughs> it's your say, though. Oh, I'm sorry. So, no, no, I'm, thank you. I hope that is absolutely true. I hope that's absolutely true. I was true. like, if I can survive that, you've been. 
Um, I did just understudy, which was also the first time I understudy, oh, and that was also terrifying in a different way. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I'll tell you, the first moment that I got back into the rehearsal room, Never. it felt like what you were saying. It felt so good yeah. to see people again and to breathe together, to create together, to hear ideas together, to talk about things that otherwise in day-to-day -day life you don't always get to delve into yeah. to mm -hmm. be able to allow yourself to be vulnerable yeah. um to allow yourself to be seen mm -hmm. to hear other people's ideas to let them be seen it was really amazing and i and you were saying what does theater mean to me and i think it means all of that it's yeah, great yeah and one of the my mentor had said Actors are healers of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you create the energy of truth on stage, you will heal the whole city. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So I look at it as I am a conduit. I am a channel for mm -hmm. those energies to come through mm -hmm. so that people will be able yeah. to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so I love that's it. really so, lovely. Yeah. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> can't top that one. <laughs> Well, our work here is done. Yeah. Well, well done there. So you want to be healed. Uh, coming. <laughs> right? Come and get healed, y'all. I'd love to see if there are any questions in the chat. So uh, we didn't have any questions, but we did have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, Sue Mon said, not daring to take up space is such an issue I face too. Mm -hmm. Very good to hear I'm not alone. It's been a common experience for Asian men as well as women. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Take your space. Yep. Do it. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> not to make it therapy because it's not therapy, but like, what was that moment for y'all as artists? Or, I mean, because it didn't take me to, I was in my, I was in my 30s before I would call myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. I would identify myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I would meet, because, you know, it's like that set thing that people do when you meet each other, right? Which is just like, hey, what do you do? And it's like, I'm, I'm a medical writer. That's <laughs> it wasn't until I was in my 30s before I said, I'm an artist mm -hmm. or whatever, right? What was that moment for y'all? Or, or was that never an issue? Were you all just sort of like, you know? <laughs> No, I, I've been an artist, but whatever. <laughs> oh, I, that happened immediately for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as soon as, as, soon as that door opened mm -hmm. and I was able to speak Shakespeare, which mm -hmm. I literally like days prior to rehearsal had never spoken mm -hmm. or even seen mm -hmm. anyone do that, mm -hmm. was a, a brand new world for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I immediately became, Become it was insidious in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. It just, it just entered me and it and it really hasn't left. And I realized that that's who I am. Like, yeah, I have side gigs and we all have, we all have to make money in, uh, in other ways, but like I've always gravitated back. My mm -hmm. center is as an artist. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and yeah, it's, it's a, a our, acting, being on stage as much as it terrifies me. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's a way for me to, I make a joke out of it, but like there have been times uh, being in the arts where I, I, I've said to myself, this, if it wasn't for this, I would be in the like front page news right now. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I've, I've been able to find a way to just let go and to mm -hmm. take my day out mm -hmm. sometimes doing on, on, on a character mm -hmm. on stage mm -hmm. and just like, oh man, I've been keeping that. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the opportunity for me to just mm -hmm. go on stage and be like, Bleh! yeah, mm -hmm. and still and be and be disagree with the character that I'm playing, right. and that's okay because mm -hmm. yeah. you can agree, but you can disagree, and you can you can have that conversation with the character you're playing during rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kept me on. Like I feel like I I still have that energy. Like if I didn't have this, I don't know where I'd be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. What about for other folks? What was that moment of like saying, you know, I self-identify as this? Which again, I, mean, I have mixed feelings about yeah. this because I also- you want to go? I was just fine. going to say on the categories on the tax forms. <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> Performing artists. Yes. Yes. Uh, what is the W9? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, right. I've always felt very creative. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Hawaiian, and Hawaiian people are just very um, performance oriented. We're mm -hmm. very creative, artsy people. The whole hymn and the history is a, it's a spoken, it's a oral mm -hmm. history. Right? There's nothing really written down. The language itself was literally only they they only tried to create a written language when the missionaries came and they mm -hmm. tried to uh, to translate the Bible. That's 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 
real. That's actual what happened. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I guess it's always kind of been in me. And I say that because I'm like, I'm not full Hawaiian. I'm a lot of things. I'm a big mutt. So, um, but I, I cling to that because that's the biggest culture that I have. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always felt really creative and I grew up with music, and church and singing, and, mm -hmm. but I always wanted to be an actor and I never did it until I moved to San Diego 10 years after college when I was mm -hmm. lost and not knowing what I was doing because I had no plan. And I was like, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I did it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I guess this is where I was supposed to be this whole time. Mm -hmm. And ever since I did that, I've always known who I was, even if I stepped away, even if I was doing other things, because you got to work, mm -hmm. you got to have a life, you got to, you know, you need to have, you need to settle and balance and everything else. But well, yeah, no. you, it pulls you back in, man. It just, you it pulls you back in, <laughs> right? And you're like, no, and then it, you're okay. I love you. I love you though. So, <laughs> it's cool. so and here we are. Yeah. It always pulls you back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, y'all keep going. I'm gonna scoot back in. Oh. Keep, yeah, keep chatting. Keep oh, well, I was just gonna say that I've gone back and forth in my life about how to share what I do because, um, because I think of the history of how I began it and how my parents really, really did not want me to do this, that it always felt like there was a veil of, can I really say that this is what I do? It felt almost I don't want to say shame, but it felt like I had to, I was apologizing mm -hmm. for the work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's taken, I think it's taken a whole journey to get to a place where I can say, oh no, yes. What do you do? Oh, I'm an actor. And normally people's response is what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, because it seems like you can only be an actor if it turns out one way. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in that place where mm -hmm. they've understand or they recognize you then it's like huh? like what does that mean what what exactly are you doing um but I think that that's kind of the exciting part about Intamon and this theater and all the things that we're, we're talking about with Tumai Hollow it's like yeah come come see what that means like what does that mean to have all these humans sitting here creating this story <laughs> yeah, I can't no. think of a better segue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> well, well, this was uh, this was incredible. Thank you to the uh, actor team, and it's pretty cool because they're this is the core family <laughs> that's in the show. And then uh, we have another actor who wasn't uh, who's not here MJ. with us, but MJ. Yeah, Who's honestly going to be the best? <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, thank you to Jesse for hosting. Again, we're so happy to have you. And thank you to you all for joining. Those of you who joined us live, if you're watching it on demand later on YouTube or on the website, thank you. Um, you know, uh, if you enjoyed the conversation today, uh, we hope that you will be part of this campaign and share the love with us. Again, you can uh, text. 44321, text Intamon and make a donation. I just checked before I came back over here and we're almost to $13,000. Wow. 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 So uh, thank you. And uh, thank you to the person out there that's gonna push us over. Yeah. Wow, I can't wait to see that. And um, we're gonna have an event every single Wednesday of the campaign. So next week, we're going to have uh, the second volume of our Celebrating Asian American Art and mm -hmm. Artist event. It's really cool. It starts with uh, four short pre-recorded performances that were created just for this. And then there will be a panel conversation about representation and the sort of like the unique challenges facing the AAPI community in the theater. So we hope you'll tune in. That's next week, Wednesday at five o'clock. You can learn all about this, buy tickets for the show, make a donation at intamon.org. So uh, yeah, thank you all again. Thank and you. thank you for being part of Share the Love. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Or <laughs> 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 Don't know. I understand. <laughs> yeah.